I might have one by my desk. Hold on, hold on. But, um, okay. So to solve one of these problems, a problem like this, and solve an equation, um, one thing I noticed is we have fractions. So I'm going to mostly talk to this side of the class because they're a little bit more vocal than that side of the class. But to solve a problem like this, you have a whole bunch of fractions. So the first thing I like to always do is get rid of all of my fractions. And remember, all a fraction is is division, right? That's all a fraction is. So what I'm saying is I'm dividing by 8, I'm dividing by 4, and I'm dividing by 4 over here. So to undo division, we can multiply, right? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to multiply by the least common multiple for all of our denominators. And when I look at this, I say, what is the smallest number that 4, 4, and 8 all go into? And you can say that number is 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every single term by 8. And the reason why is because if I divide by 8 and multiply by 8, those are going to cancel each other out, right? Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, why can't you then multiply these by 4 and this one by 8? Well, because then I won't be doing everything to the same, everything to every term. And remember, when you're dealing with equations, you always have to do whatever you do on the left side, you have to do again on the right side. So if I'm multiplying 8 times this term, I need to multiply this term times 8 and this term times 8. Now, remember, there's a couple things. When multiplying fractions times a whole number, it's going to look like 8 over 1 times... 15 over 8x plus 8 over 4, I'm oh, sorry, 8 over 1 times 1 over 4 yes. equals 8 over 1 times 7 over 4x, all right? So then, these technically cancel out. If I multiply by 8 and divide by 8, you can just cancel them out and you're left with 15x. However, over here, these aren't going to cancel out, but what you have is 8 times 1 is 8, 1 times 4 is 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Equals, and then the same thing over here. Um, 8, you could just cancel these out. You could say 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Or you could do 8 times 7, which is 56, divided by 4, which is still going to give you 14x. So now what I'm at is, I'm, now I'm at an equation. I've gotten rid of all my fractions. So I'm at a point where it's actually... I can work with this. Now what I'm going to do is I need to get, remember when you're solving for x, you want to get x by itself. So what I'm going to have to do is get my x's on one side. You can either choose the left or the right side, but typically a, a rule, good rule of thumb is to get rid of your smallest variable. So here I have a negative 14. Um, so I'm going to go into, actually, you know, I, I could get rid of the negative 14, but then I'm going to left with 0, and I don't want to show you guys that problem for this one. What I'm going to do for here is I'm actually going to get rid of the negative 15. Or, I'm sorry, I'm going to get rid of the 15x by subtracting 15. Therefore, I'll be left with 2 equals a negative x. So now my x is alone. However, I do have a negative sign in front. So I do, girls, Rena. So I don't want to be dealing with a negative, I'm not solving for negative x, I'm needing to solve for positive x. So I divide by negative 1, and I get x equals a negative 2. And you could have subtracted 14 and then did the other way if you wanted to. But that's how you solve an equation like that.